Ah, é um prazer estar aqui. A ah, palestra maravilhosa do Andrei. E eu não tinha como não cantar outra música para fechar o que ele disse. Uma música, uma música chamada Apenas Amar, do Denis Soares. E é mais ou menos assim. <música> Organiza para que nos transformar. O Cristo já nos auxilia para a vida nova alçar. Todas já os belos podem vir de nossas próprias mãos. Sentimentos triunfantes brotam naturais. Então, vou por dentro me preparar para ser rebelde e aceitar. Invencível expande o amor em fraternidade. Eu desejo apenas amar e tudo mais de afetos cativar. Uma para resplandecer dentro do ser para o Pai glorificar o por dentro me preparar Pra ser rebelde e aceitar Invencível expande o amor oh, oh, Em fraternidade Eu desejo apenas amar E tudo mais De afetos cativar uma luz vem para resplandecer dentro do ser para o Pai glorificar. Que a gente se conheça melhor, então, né? Tem uma outra música, acho que ainda tem um tempinho, que é bem a, o que o Andrei também sugeriu como palestra que chama-se Conhecer a Si Mesmo, que é assim. Buscar a si mesmo no coração Não é tarefa fácil, não Buscar a si mesmo no coração Não é tarefa fácil, não se penetrar, se reparar, se conhecer, se aceitar e melhorar, e florescer, frutificar para ajudar, Jesus com seu sorriso amar, buscar a si mesmo do coração. Não é tarefa fácil, não. Buscar a si mesmo no coração Não é tarefa fácil, não. Renunciar a todo orgulho ao egoísmo Vivenciar o amor de Deus E cultivar a humanidade Respeitar se amar amando ao seu irmão Buscar a si mesmo o coração Não é tarefa fácil, não Sem Jesus buscar a si mesmo o coração Não é tarefa fácil, não Se penetrar, se reparar, se conhecer 
si aceitar y mejorar y florecer, frutifica para ayudar. Jesus com seu sorriso amar, buscar a si mesmo o coração. Não é tarefa fácil, não. Buscar a si mesmo o coração. Não é tarefa fácil, não. Mas é possível, né? E aí, se o host me permitir, acho que pelo horário ainda posso mais uma. Pode, pode. <risos> pode, pode. Tem uma outra música que é da Marielsa de Scott. E I would like to invite our friends, even though the musics here are in Portuguese, so now, uh, thinking someone, put this music in your thoughts and thinking someone to give them as a gift. Ok? Uh -huh. Então, aqueles amigos que puderem agora vir para si mesmo, se interiorizar e, através dessa música, emanar bons pensamentos, é o meu convite para vocês. E é uma música que se chama Pare para Pensar, da Marielsa Tiscate, que fala o seguinte. Acho que também combina com o que o Andrei falou. Agora para pensar é tempo pare para pensar o que faz a vida quantos minutos você já viveu em todo esse tempo você cresceu responda para si mesmo que você construiu Ponte nos dedos Quantos consolou Tente lembrar Se você amou A quem você amou Por que você amou É tempo, pare pra pensar Enquanto há tempo de recomeçar essa vida Pense bem no que vem fazendo E no muito que resta fazer Não fique se lamentando não foi Deus que lhe pôs a sofrer. Agora pare para pensar. Há tempo, pare para pensar. Do que faz a vida? Do que faz a vida? Do que faz a vida? Valeu, Kleber. Muito, muito, muito obrigada. Ah, tem, tem mais alguma musiquinha aí no, no baú? Uma curtinha? Oi, estão me ouvindo? Estão me ouvindo? Sim. Ah, agora sim, né? Tem uma que se chama Basta Ter Fé, é de minha autoria e de um amigo meu, uh, do Amazonas, e ele é assim. Noite de luar Chego a pensar na imensidão Quer ter você perto de mim e em oração te peço perdão por tudo que eu sei que posso melhorar e esse eterno amor. 
jamais cessará em meu coração. Eu sei que fiz na influência. Deixo fluir e vibrar por dessa força que veio me guiar, que me faz sentir. Pode existir um mundo de paz. Sei que nasci para vencer. Esse é o leme que me faz viver. Sei que Deus está onde eu estiver. Basta ter fé. Deixo fluir e vibrar Toda essa força que veio me guiar Me faz sentir que pode existir Um mundo de paz Sei que nasci para vencer Esse é o leme que me faz viver Sei que Deus está onde eu estiver, basta ter fé. Eu sei que Deus está onde eu estiver, basta ter fé. Eu sei que Deus está onde eu estiver, basta ter fé. Uhul! Aonde que acha a música? <risos> Vou passar ah, o link depois. <risos> Vou passar o link, tá no, tá no Spotify. Ah, legal. Passa sim, pode passar aí pelo WhatsApp do grupo ou lá no nosso Toronto Spiritist Weekend. No Facebook. <risos> Thank you. A gente se vê amanhã. Ou continua com a gente aí. Continuo, continuo. Estou aqui. Cada, cada intervalo a gente vai cantar um pouquinho. Vamos ver. Está sobrando tempo? Vem, vem. Beleza. <risos> Obrigada, Gato. Até daqui a pouco. Até mais. Tchau. Weber, what a voice, my friend. Thank you very much for this amazing time. Bring us more peaceful mood. Thank you. Our next two letter, lectures will be in English. Our second lecture is with Thiago Leite, who is part of the communication team of the Canadian Spirit Council and a member of the Alan Kardec Vancouver Society, where he volunteers in multiple departments. As such, social assistance, doctrinal studies, mediumship, and Spiritist Young Education. Thiago also works as a localization project manager, helping business expand globally. Thiago is going to talk to us about what is my family type, spiritual or biological, the union, the union of spirits with the same family contest and intend to bring us them together in favor of reciprocal evolution and intimidate reform. The microphone is all open for you, Chagu. Welcome, thank you for your time. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for having me here. Good afternoon. We are very, very happy to be here today at the 8th Toronto Spiritist Weekend. This time talking a little about family and the connections we establish as immortal spirits that we all are. So I'm just gonna share my screen with you guys so you can uh, see my presentation. Um, let me just do that very quickly. Are you able to see my screen? Perfect. There you go. So, uh, so like I said, we're very happy to be here. So once we start learning uh, what spiritism teaches us about family ties, that's saying, let's just, move. I didn't ask to be in this family, it starts making less and less sense. 
This is actually something we tell our kids at the child and youth spiritist education that they can no longer use that argument as now they know how things work. Now we know how things work when we start learning what spiritism teaches us about this matter, about the family connections we established from thousands and thousands of years back. We not only asked, but oftentimes we begged to reincarnate as part of that group of, of beings. When talking about divine providence, we need to understand that there are no coincidences. There is always a reason behind everything that happens to us. Spiritism teaches us that spiritual bonds, they come before blood ties. In chapter four of the gospel according to spiritism, Allan Kardec says that in the spirit world, the spirits, they form groups or families united by affection, sympathy, and similar inclinations. These uh, spirits, happy at being together, they seek out one another. Still in the gospel, according to Spiritism, now chapter 14, we see that blood ties, they do not, do not necessarily establish ties among spirits. We are all immortal spirits who have lived in many other bodies, wearing many different personalities. We all have a story to tell. So Alan Kardec says, spirits who incarnate in the same family, especially among close relatives, they are often most, they are most often sympathetic spirits connected by previous relationships that are expressed by their mutual affection during earthly life. Nevertheless, it may also happen that such spirits are complete strangers to one another, divided by past life aversions that are now expressed as animosity to serve as a trial. So what is Kardec saying here? That spirits who incarnate in the same family, they are connected by previous relationships. And if we dig deeper, like we said, behind all that hatred that sometimes we see among family members, or acquaintances, behind all that hatred lies a beautiful connection which is waiting to be nurtured, to be developed. Throughout this uh, millennial journey, we have created many bonds with a variety of people or spirits. We have lived many lives, like we said. We have had many siblings, parents, lovers, as well as many enemies. We have loved many people, but we also have hated and hurt several others. Regardless of the type of relationship we created, be it a hatred or love, we still established a connection with that soul. We became responsible for that feeling we nurtured. We became a part of their family and they in turn became part of our family as well, part of our spiritual family. And that is something we cannot change because true family bonds are not blood ties, but ties of sympathy and similarity of ideas. That's what spiritism teaches us. So these ties, they connect us, incarnate and discarnate spirits before, during, and after our corporeal existences. So before the biological family comes the spiritual family. This actually reminds us of uh, Maria João de Deus, the mother of the Brazilian medium, Francisco Cândido Xavier, or Chico Xavier, like we call him. So uh, his mother, she passed away when he was only five years old. Chico was one of her many kids. And there are several stories about the moments the Brazilian medium could see and talk to his mother already discarded through his mediumship. Her lovely presence would embrace him with peace, with love, with hope, giving Chico the strength he needed through her words and affection during those special meetings. And that happens to all of us. We can be mediums, we cannot, it doesn't matter. These spiritual beings, they are always by our side, cheering for us, 
praying for us. So the point here is that the body may die. Times may change, but the connection we once made, it lasts forever, especially when we are talking about love. So these ties, they can be strong, healthy, they can be bright, but they can also be weak, thin, as though there is no connection at all. They can be quite painful, but they're still there. So being perfect in countless ways, the divine providence gave us the blessing of reincarnation as a powerful resource to help us advance while healing our souls from painful events. So we all have our shares of pain. We all have memories from the most difficult and joyful times. They're all stored in our spiritual envelope. Of course, thanks to the forgetfulness of the past, these memories, they won't manifest clearly as though we're remembering something that happened yesterday. They will, however, manifest as sensations, as feelings. Hence, the mutual affection or hatred we feel from one another. And that is why two individuals born from different parents often may be more related, spiritually speaking, than if they were related through blood. These sympathetic spirits, they attract each other based on the affinity of ideals. They search for each other and they usually feel happy together. Whereas two relatives by blood may repel each other, which we see often happening sometimes within our own families. However, it is important to reinforce that just because we may have more similarities with friends, it doesn't mean that our relatives by blood, they also don't deserve our love, our respect. Even if we don't love them as we love our close friends, for example, because that relative, that person, that spirit is just as a familiar spirit as the friend we love and cherish. If we have that difficult family member it means there is something we need to learn. There is something we need to develop. There is something we need to improve. As our goal is to love one another, embracing our universal family. In question 205 of the Spirit's book, the spiritual benefactors, they say that reincarnation broadens the duties of fraternity. Because your neighbor or your servant may be a spirit who was formerly related to you by blood. That's what the spirits tell us. So have we ever thought about this? That sometimes that person, that person we mistreat, that person we ignore, we judge, we point fingers at, may have been someone who was very dear to us in another lifetime. And that for some reason, the forgetfulness of the past did not allow us to remember them in this lifetime. Jesus himself, he talks about families through spirit ties. As we can see in Matthew's gospel, chapter 12, verses 46 to 50. So while Jesus was still talking to the crowd, his mother and brothers, they stood outside wanting to speak to him. Then someone told him, your mother and brothers are standing outside wanting to speak to you. He replied to him, who is my mother and who are my brothers? Pointing to his disciple, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. So what is Jesus teaching us here? Clearly, his intention was not to be rude or not to acknowledge his family by blood. No. And Jesus never did anything just for the purpose of doing it, just for fun. There was no coincidence when talking about Jesus and his actions. As the very wise spirit that he is, he took that opportunity to let the world know that we are all related as spirits, as we come from the same source. And what is the source? God. 
and more. Jesus teaches us that we will embrace that fact for good as we evolve and understand our role as agents of God's will through actions of charity. So God, he did not create us for idleness. He didn't create us to hate one another. He created us all equals, simple, ignorant beings, giving us all the same opportunities. We all have that divine spark within us. We all come from the same source. In the gospel, according to Spiritism, Allan Kardec teaches us that the spiritual ties, they are permanent. They are strengthened through purification and are perpetuated in the spirit world through the many migrations of the soul. Reincarnation reinforces that teaching from Jesus as it helps us grow spiritual ties. If we look at matter only, we would see these ties as something fragile like matter itself. Because pure materialistic connections, possessions, they extinguish over time, as there would be no spiritual ground for anything to grow. Also, we don't take that to the spirit world with us once we return. Because we are spiritual beings. Eventually, we will return to our real, true life in the spirit world. So when the spirit leaves the earth behind, it takes with it the passions or virtues that are inherent to its nature and goes into the spirit world either to perfect itself or to remain at a standstill until it desires to see the light. Some, therefore, depart carrying with them great hatred and insatiable desires for vengeance. But a few of these more advanced than the others, they are allowed to glimpse a bit of the truth. They realize the disastrous effects of their passions and then resolve to the better. They understand that in order to reach God, there is one password only. And what is this password? Charity. However, there can be no charity without forgetting offenses and wrongs. Neither can there be charity with hatred in the heart and without forgiveness says the Spirit, St. Augustine, in chapter 14 of the Gospel according to Spiritism. And how can we evolve towards God if we don't love our neighbor? How can we evolve towards God if, if we cannot practice acts of charity? Deep in our souls, we know that. And this is why most of us ask for a new incarnation within a particular group of spirits, related by blood or not so that we can develop virtues such as mercy, patience, so that we can learn from one another, and most importantly, so that we can forgive ourselves from that dark past that still tortures us. Back to the gospel according to Spiritism, St. Augustine teaches us that in the spirit world, we look at those we detested while on earth. According to the spirit guide, at such a sight, our animosity reawakens. We rebel against the idea of forgiveness and even more against self-denial, especially when it means loving those who perhaps destroyed our fortune, our honor, our family. However, our unfortunate hearts are shaken. We are tired of feeling pain. We can no longer manage our pain. St. Augustine says that we still hesitate and waver, troubled by our confusing sentiments. At the same time, if we pay attention to our inner self, we will feel that gut feeling pushing us to start a new chapter as we can no longer suffer, remembering those painful events. Then, if we truly embrace the idea the suggestion to do better, if we accept that change starts when we acknowledge our weaknesses and ask for help, we then pray to God and implore good spirits to give us the strength to guide us during this 
very decisive moments. Finally, after years of meditation and prayer, the spirit profits from the use of a body that is to be born in the family of the one it used to hate. And then we ask the spirits designated to transmit the divine orders to be allowed to fulfill on the earth the destiny of that body that is about to be formed. We ask to reincarnate because deep in our hearts, we know that we need that to take the next step in our evolutional journey. We know that. The spirit author, Andre Luis, he brings us wonderful examples about family ties, reincarnation, and how love and forgiveness, they can play a key role in helping us take that next step in our evolutionary journey. He also shows us God's wisdom in his actions. In the book, Missionaries of the Light, the spirit author tells us the story of Sejismundo through the psychography of Francisco Cândido Xavier. In the book, we learn that Sejismundo, in a past existence, he was murdered by, he, he actually murdered his friend Adelino. So he would have a chance to marry Raquel, Adelino's wife. He was madly in love with Raquel. So he thought, well, if I kill Adelino, she'll be free to marry me. She'll be free to love me. So that's what he did. But the crime generated serious consequences for everyone involved. The death of her husband led Raquel to prostitution and drug addiction. When realized that his plan went wrong, Sejismundo's life was ruined. Adelino also suffered in the spirit world. So Sejismundo, after a life of profound pain, returned to the spirit world in a miserable situation, marked by significant struggles as he decided to take his own life. After spending some time suffering thanks to the crimes committed, he made certain progress when he awakened to his spiritual reality and decided to work to repair the past. Because when we return to the spirit world, we will observe our past deeds and we will suffer by revealing our poor actions. It is not that God's going to punish us. No, we ourselves will inflict our own punishment as it will be hard for us to see that once again, we went against our spiritual nature. We went against the natural laws. So Sejismundo then begins the reconstruction of his life, starting a significant transformation in his attitudes, opening up to the assistance work, spending his most intense energies helping the needy of all kinds, supporting the fallen and the suffering just like himself. He wanted to reconcile with the laws of God, and above all, with his conscience and with his inner self. And thanks to his tireless work in the spirit world, he conquered the sympathy of many. However, at some point he realized that in order to take that next step, he needed a new existence, a new incarnation to put into practice what he learned and to get Adelino and Raquel to forgive him. But thanks to the merit accumulated by years of dedication to the suffering friends of the spirit world, Sejismundo earned many benefits and the gratitude from those who were helped by him. Given these merits, the spirits of high moral came to his aid, to his support and protection, announcing that his next incarnation was going to happen very soon. We ask or receive the new opportunity where we will try to repair the past and build a better relationship with our family members. The path will be challenging as we previously uh, discussed, because even though we won't remember exactly what we did, the memories, they will manifest as sensations, as feelings, and sometimes animosity. Sejismundo would have Raquel and Adelino, his parents, having the opportunity to reconcile with those two. 
The spirit guides then worked to convince the couple to receive Sigismund as their son. Raquel accepted immediately, while Adelino, he was reluctant to have him as a son, seeing uh, in Sigismund the one who murdered him in his previous life. That was a big challenge for Adelino, who, although was very upset with Sigismundo, was a good person, honest, hardworking, and filled with noble values. Then after several excursions into the physical world and meeting with Raquel and Adelino's family, the spirits then managed to show the couple how important it would be for everyone involved to have that new opportunity of being reunited in a new family. All of this would contribute to everyone's growth and the development of a strong bond between these two brothers in God, Adelino and Sigismundo. That bond had already been created when they first met. However, it was fragile due to the painful moment when, Adel when Sigismundo decided to take Adelino's life. The book shows us that even when we commit the greatest atrocities, if we are truly interested in improving and transforming ourselves, we will be greatly helped by the spirit world. Our past, it will not go away, but we will help, we will have the help we need to restart, to rebuild our experiences, temporarily forgetting what we did. And that's what happened with our friend Sigismundo. When he became aware of all the atrocities he committed, when he faced his own shadows, he realized the importance of work as a way of spiritual reconstruction. He gave himself intensely to others, often forgetting himself. He helped, he comforted, he supported, and above all, he renewed himself, opening up to get a new corporeal experience. He could have chosen just to suffer and to remain at that state for as long as he wanted. But the pain, his conscience did not let him. He chose to awake from that pain. He just couldn't deal with it anymore. So by his decision, he said to himself, I am going to take the next step. I need it for myself because I am a immortal spirit. This example we shared was of a planned reincarnation to change a past of mistakes and misunderstandings. And, and reincarnation, it helps us to understand divine justice. Without reincarnation, we would hardly be able to know how God works, how to understand that in such a wonderful, in such a rich world, we have people going through the most primary and severe difficulties. People without food, people on the streets on one side, and so much waste on the other. How to understand justice without grasping the concepts of reincarnation? So we see here that we will never, ever be alone. The more challenging and complex the mission, the more support, the more assistance we will have. We are never alone. We often disconnect from the spirit guides because we choose to do so through our actions of selfishness and hatred, through our moral vices. But if we truly raise our thoughts towards the spirit world, if we truly do that, if we truly act as Jesus recommended, we will see. We will feel the beloved guides surrounding us with their prayers, with their suggestions. We will see them offering their hands to help us walk through this path. St. Augustine urges us to understand that the soul who incarnates in our family comes from the spirit world to progress just like we do. 
Know your duties and put all your love in leading that soul to God. This is the mission that has been entrusted to you and for which you will receive recompense if you faithfully fulfill it. The care and education you give that soul will help in its self-improvement and future well-being, says the Spirit Guide. We all have a duty, a mission to fulfill in our families. The education, the way we treat and look after one another, they all count. We are here to support one another with care and with gratitude as well, because we don't know the story behind that family connection. We actually know, but we just don't remember. We could have been given an opportunity to repair issues from thousands of years back. If we knew how long it takes for the spirit guides to reunite that group of spirits under the same roof, perhaps we would value this chance more. Do we think about it when dealing with our relatives? Well, most of us don't because we tend to complain a lot. How wonderful it would be if our actions towards them were commended by this intense feeling of gratitude. Understand, understanding that thanks to God's mercy, we are sharing the same home after we don't know how long. We learn it could take centuries until, our, until we cross paths again to repair certain areas of our past. It could take centuries. And what are we doing now to change that past? To reconnect with the souls that perhaps we hurt in the past? What are we doing to forgive? Therefore, as spiritists, what do we think when dealing with a difficult family member? Do we remember what we learn with the doctrine in an argument when we lose our patience? Well, we can't even say that we lose our patience because we cannot lose something that we don't have, something that we don't own. Accidents, they don't happen when talking about God and his providence. He knows exactly what he does and what he allows. Nothing happens without his permission. Do we realize that sometimes we may be the ones with a duty to fulfill towards a family member we complain about? Spiritism then teaches us to appreciate more one another as part of a universal family that goes beyond matter. It's not easy. We're not saying it's easy. It's, it's hard, actually. But can we see all the support we have in place for this existence, for us to succeed here? God never imposes trials beyond the strength of those who ask for them. He only allows trials that can be accomplished, says the Spirit St. Augustine. That's the Spirit St. Augustine, a superior spirit, who is saying that. So he knows what he's talking about. And the spirits, they teach us that God sometimes allows us to be repaid with ingratitude in order to test our perseverance in practicing the good. We're in a world of trials and expiations, after all. The spirit, Nayo Lucio, uh, he tells us a story in the book, Jesus in the Home, through the medium Francisco Candido Xavier. According to Nayo Lucio, uh, the members of Simon Peter's household, they were gathered around Jesus, listening to his gentle and persuasive voice as he was making comments on the sacred passages. So when Jesus ended his lesson, Peter's mother-in-law, she was troubled. And then she asked him, Lord, what is our life in the home supposed to be after all? Jesus gazed at her 
questioningly, implying that he wanted her to explain herself more fully. So she elaborated. We begin the endeavor amongst flowers, only to find ourselves gathering a bunch of thorns later on. At first, there is the promise of peace and understanding. However, stones and troubles soon appear. Seeing that she was on the verge of tears, Jesus responded quickly, the home is the school for souls, the temple where divine wisdom gradually enables us to understand humankind more fully. We will repeat, the home is a school for souls. It is a temple. It is a temple. A temple where God, in its infinite wisdom, placed us all together so that we can understand humankind more fully. How can we understand humankind if we can't even understand that small group of people we call family? Jesus then asked uh, Peter, Peter's mother-in-law, what do you do first with lentils before serving them at mealtime? She responded kind of hesitant, like, why is he asking me that? So she said, well, of course, Lord, I have to put them on the stove and cook them long enough. Then I have to season them in order to make them taste good. And would you perchance serve raw dough at the table? Asked Jesus. Then she said, of course not. In order to make it edible, I would have to bake it in the oven. Otherwise, Jesus then considered the following. In heaven too, there is a festive banquet where our sentiments must serve the Father's glory. And that goes back to what we were just talking about. We are agents of God's will. We are here to serve our Father through our acts of charity. We need to be patient and let the other mature or cook long enough like we do need to mature as well so that we are ready for the seasoning. And what is that seasoning he's talking about here? His gospel. Jesus' gospel. Most of the time, says Jesus, the home is a holy cauldron or the preparatory oven. What may seem to us like affliction or suffering in the home is actually a resource for the spirit. The soul that is awakened to the Lord's will receives the most enlightening blessings from its renewing struggles. Because only by living with others in the home, by studying aspirations and inclinations unlike our own, and by observing the defects of others and putting up with them, and putting up with them, can we learn to overcome our own imperfections? Home is like a preparatory oven. The challenges we face within our family group, they are important resources for the soul, for our soul, who begs for liberation from the past. If, if, the soul has decided to awaken from the pure materialistic illusions, it will see and receive the most enlightening blessings as it will understand that there is much more to life than the short span of time we spend together in only one incarnation. There is much more. And look how interesting. Only by living with others in the home only when studying, observing the personal challenges and moral vices of our relatives and putting up with them, we will learn to overcome our own imperfections. How many times are we invited to practice mercy, charity at home? How many times are we invited to forgive, to listen? 
how many times? So we incarnate in the family we need for our moral improvement. Reincarnation brings the same characters from yesterday's dramas and conflicts back to the earth. These characters, they change roles for the readjustment, learning through challenges and conflicts, the respect and discipline that are necessary for liberation from the dark past, from that obscure past that keeps torturing us. Haven't you ever noticed how quickly a person's life passes by? Continues our Lord Jesus. The life of the body, it is much like that of a flower. In the morning, it releases a fragrance. At night, it withers. Our home, the home, is a brief course on the fraternity we will enjoy in the life eternal. It is a brief course. The suffering and natural conflicts within its walls are lessons. Look at that, that's Jesus saying, our model, our guide, the purest spirit that has been on earth, the spirit God sent to this planet to guide us, to instruct us, to show us the path to moral transformation. He said that. He's asking us to be patient, to understand that it's just a brief course, that we need to learn to live in the home with our relatives, that we need to learn to respect one another, seeing everything that happens to us as lessons, as opportunities to grow, to develop, to acquire important values for the immortal being that we are. So the challenges, they are important lessons for us. After all, we are living in a world of trials and expiations. We are not, we are not here on vacation. We wish, we, we truly wish that, but we are not. We are here to work. And it is a lot of work. It is a lot of work. Our lives are filled with great opportunities to work, to transform ourselves, to get better. These difficulties are the resources that will make us, make us grow towards that final objective. And what is the final objective for all of us? It is perfection. We will be like Jesus one day. We learn that he's our guide. He's our goal. He is where we are going to get eventually. If we put into work his lessons, if we truly take this opportunity, like so many other people did in the past, we can see so many examples of Christians, of moral persons who have walked on this planet. And we can be like them too. Their most valuable teaching was through example and not just by saying random words or trying to convert people. No. It was by example, by their actions. Our actions speak much more than our mouths. So we can consider our family environment as a permanent lab where its members, they can work on their feelings and emotions, providing them with the right dosage, 
managing them safely for a better outcome. We don't necessarily live in a perfect family as we are far from perfect, but we live in the group where our evolutional needs are met. Once again, we incarnate in the family we need for our moral improvement. In the home, we will work our differences and conflicts with each other based on mercy, tolerance, compassion. To replace, to replace the less happy memories and emotions in our spiritual archives. And we will reincarnate in the same group as many times as needed until we truly transform our feelings for one another. And the ties that unite us, especially those that connect parents and children, they are not broken. Not even when there are conflicts between both sides. No, they're not broken. Conflicts must inevitably be worked on in these or other lifetimes. Once again, until the feelings are transformed and mutual affection is acquired. The spirits, they teach us that gentle and challenging family members, therefore, they proceed from a previously outlined schedule from the divine providence. So there is a schedule outlined by God. Can we understand that? He carefully planned our existence. We probably, most likely, reunited with his family members before incarnating. We made plans. We cried. We probably argued a little as well. But we agreed that the best solution was to return to the earth and work together to transform all that hatred into love. So let us not be the ones to say, oh, I'll leave it for the next incarnation because this relationship is broken. I don't feel like trying to fix it in this lifetime. No, let's not waste our time with that. Let us try to do our best here and now as we don't know what it'll be like later. If we received such a trial now, it is because this is the right time to handle it. Let us take the first step towards our liberation. It's our own liberation. And understanding that God, he doesn't make any mistakes. Let's, once and for all, acknowledge our spiritual nature understanding that we are spirits. We are experiencing multiple lifetimes in multiple bodies until we reach perfection. We will only be truly free. We will only be truly free and happy once we love one another. As Jesus once said, our family, it is much bigger than we think. And it definitely goes beyond the blood ties, way, way beyond. If we study Spiritism a little, if we pay attention to all the lectures, we'll see, we will learn that. As the Spirit Emmanuel says in our Daily Bread, chapter 117, titled In the Family, by Francisco Cândido Xavier. How can we be benefactors for a hundred or a thousand people if we have not yet learned to serve five or ten? Because sometimes we have that uh, feeling within us or the urge to help humankind and to do great things. But the greatest thing we can do is to support our family to help those who are close to us. It doesn't make sense that I'm so nice to people outside my family group, but I'm a horrible person at home, does it? 
who am I for real? This is a very important teaching from Emmanuel. How can we help like a hundred or a thousand people if we're not helping people at home? All oh, my friends, if you knew all the ties that in your present life bind you to previous ones, if you could grasp the multitude of relationships that connect people to one another for their mutual progress, you would admire even more the wisdom and goodness of the creator who allows you to live again and again to reach him in the end, says the protector spirit in the gospel according to spiritism. Oh, if only we knew. We study the doctrine we hear on the lectures or during the discussions in our study groups. But do we truly accept that as something real? Do we truly accept the spiritist teachings when it comes to family and all the connections we have? This is something to think about. This is something to discuss, to talk about. We can always pray. We can ask for guidance. The good spirits are always by our sides. Like we said, we're never alone. So we truly hope, my friends, that our lecture today brought some light to this topic. We, of course, we recommend the reading of books such as the Gospel According to Spiritism, the Spirit's Book, to learn more about this very important topic to us that is family and family ties according to the Spiritist doctrine. So here's our gratitude for your patience, for listening to us so patiently and kindly. And uh, we wish you the most wonderful re reflections this weekend in the light of Spiritism at the 8th Toronto Spiritist Weekend. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much, Tiago. Beautiful message you shared with us today. Now we have some questions. And sure. the first person who's going to ask you is Pamela. Pamela, please. Hi, Tiago. Thank you very much. Um, I have a friend that has a very difficult relationship with her parents. And um, does she should accept and keep trying to endure and improve her relationship with her parents, even though it's a toxic relationship, or she should move on with her life? That's a, a really good question. <laughs> uh, the Spiritist Doctrine, it offers us very powerful resources for us to overcome our challenges and to deal with difficult situations. We cannot uh, tell her what to do, but uh, what we learn with Spiritism is that we can always try to improve ourselves. And the first thing that every Spiritist should be doing at home is the practice of the Gospel according to Spiritism, which consists of studying passages of Jesus' teaching on the Gospel according to Spiritism, because the enlightenment from the gospel practice will help bring more harmony to our souls, to our homes. The spirit guides will come to our aid and will inspire us with good thoughts, embracing us with their love. Everyone has their moments, their own time to awaken, but it's important to know we are not alone. The spiritist center is at our disposal with public lectures, study groups to help us understanding more about ourselves. It also offers fraternal assistance chats that will certainly, certainly guide us through these difficult times. Because the Spiritism, like we said, teaches us that we are not alone. And if we can, we should, we must look for help. And the Spiritist Center, following Kardec's guidance and Jesus' teaching, will have the resources in place to support us. So when we study Spiritism, we learn 
that some struggles, some difficulties, they can come from previous lives. But in reality, it doesn't matter. In reality, we need to understand that we can learn from every single aspect of our, of our lives, from every single thing that happens to us. And we hope that by studying the doctrine, we will find the answers to our most inner question. Yeah. Thank you. Now we have a question from Rosângela. Um, Rosângela, you can ask your question. Hi, Rosângela, can you hear us? Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yes. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, Tiago, for your time, an amazing lecture. It's so easy to understand you. Uh, my question is about the feeling of guilty that uh, sometimes it comes when there is this difficulty to live with someone, with uh, a family member. So it comes to a point that there is a lot of abuse, like uh, mental, emotional, with words and so on. And, uh, and come this time that uh, you just ask yourself, do I stay or do I leave? And even though uh, you understand the needs of uh, to, uh, to go on with this relationship and do your better, but that comes this feeling of guilt. Uh, how would you advise about uh, how to do with this feeling? So you're asking how to do with the feeling of guilt? Yeah. Well, if you find the answer, you let me know. But uh, uh, what we learn with the doctrine is that uh, the feeling of guilt, it can open doors to many other challenges and difficulties that are not even part of our plan of the plan for this existence because this feeling connects us with other minds that shares the same heavy burden you know and guilty it's not healthy for us it can harm us and it can paralyze us often right so it, uh, it stops us from seeing the reality and from seeing things how they truly are. When it comes from uh, difficult relatives and uh, the most difficult situations at home, of course, we can always look for help. Spiritism teaches that we shouldn't be torturing ourselves, of course, right? Because there is a limit for everything. But only yourself will be able to tell what happens in your home and how to deal with the situation. What you could can do, what we can do is look for help, for support. Sometimes the therapy aligned with the support of the Spiritist Center, like we just talked about. So we can work out those differences. Otherwise, it could keep getting worse and worse, right? So we have the resources from the earth and from the spirit world that when combined can do great things to help us improve our relationship with our family members and to help us accept ourselves better, getting rid of that feeling of guilt. Thank you. We have another question from Fernanda this time. And I'm going to ask it is, how can I change that difficult family member? <laughs> Don't we all want that, right? Because we, uh, when, whenever we complain about a family member or about people, we usually want to change them because we want them to be like we picture. But why the urge to change someone when we have so much to change within ourselves? We have a lot to change, a lot to transform. So we learn with the doctrine, with spiritism, that we cannot change other people. Also, who are we to change them? 
sometimes I wonder if it isn't our pride speaking, like when we suppose we can change people around us so they meet our expectations, expectations that even ourselves cannot meet. What we can do as spiritists, as human beings, as spirits, what we can do is make a positive impact in the world by truly changing ourselves. And how can we change ourselves? Question 919 of the Spirit's book, Know Thyself. That's a great inner transformation guide we have there. Thanks. And we have a last question now. If I think so. I think it's the last one. Yeah. Um, what if we try it and still couldn't do everything we were supposed to do in this existence? So we came with a plan. So what if we try it and we couldn't? <laughs> Well, first, it's it's kind of difficult for us to know everything we are supposed to do, right? We come here uh, with a forgetfulness of the past, but we have like the feeling, the sensation that there are certain things that we need to accomplish. If we are tasked with uh, certain trials, we are capable of completing them. We, we talked about that and we learned with the doctrine as well. However, our primary task our main task in this planet is to leave the world better than when we arrived. You said something important, we tried. It is imperative that we try, that we give our best to overcome our challenges, especially those that are brought in our homes as we don't know what the next existence will be like. That's why we're talking about, no, we shouldn't be leaving that for the next life. We should try to overcome the difficulties now. However, if we tried all that we could, if we tried everything, we did our part. If the other family member, if the other person or situation, whatever, didn't do theirs, the divine providence will see that. If we try to be as gentle as possible, as merciful as possible, if we try to be loving, caring, patient, God will see that. We are here to work for God through acts of charity. If we did our best, our Father, our dear God, will know for sure. Thank you. That's it for the Obrigado. question. Obrigado. So Thank you. Obrigado. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chago, for yeah. this amazing hour of great teachings. Whoa. We are really have to evaluate our relationship with our family members and understand if I am a spiritual or biological member in those people lives. What a responsibility. Now we know and it's very much our responsibility to build those relationships for a better and spiritual level.